Section One of Oscar Wilde, Art and Morality. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Martin Geeson. Oscar Wilde, Art and Morality. A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray Edited by Stuart Mason Section 1 On the whole, an artist in England gains something by being attacked. His individuality is intensified. He becomes more completely himself. Of course, the attacks are very gross very impertinent and very contemptible but then no artist expects grace from the vulgar mind or style from the suburban intellect art and morality why do you always write poetry why do you not write prose prose is so much more difficult these were the words of Walter Pater to Oscar Wilde on the occasion of their first meeting, during the latter's undergraduate days at Oxford. Footnote. Oscar Wilde matriculated at Magdalen College, Oxford, October the 17th, 1874, and took his B.A. degree on November the 28th, 1878. Pater was at the time a fellow and tutor of Brasenose. Those were days of lyrical ardours and of studious sonnet-writing, wrote Wilde, in reviewing one of Pater's books some years later. Days when one loved the exquisite intricacy and musical repetitions of the ballade and the villanelle with its linked long-drawn echoes and its curious completeness days when one solemnly sought to discover the proper temper in which a triolet should be written delightful days in which i am glad to say there was far more rhyme than reason oscar wilde was never a voluminous writer writing bores me so he once said to andre gide and at the time of which he speaks he had published little except some occasional verses in his university magazines then in eighteen eighty one came his volume of collected poems followed at intervals during the next nine or ten years by a collection of fairy stories and some essays in the leading reviews i did not quite understand what mr pater meant he continues and it was not till i had carefully studied his beautiful and suggestive essays on the renaissance that i fully realized what a wonderful self-conscious art the art of english prose writing really is or may be made to be it has been suggested that it was his late apprenticeship to an art that requires lifelong study which rendered wilde's prose so insincere resembling more the conscious artifice of the modern french school than the restrained yet jewelled style of pater whom he claimed as his master in prose it was not till eighteen ninety that he published his first and only novel the picture of dorian gray with its strangeness of colour and its passionate suggestion flickering like lightning through the gloom of the subject the puritans and the philistines who scented veiled improprieties in its paradoxes were shocked but it delighted the connoisseur and the artist wearied as they were with the humdrum accounts of afternoon tea-parties and the love-affairs of the curate 
that such a master of prose and scholarship as pater should have written in terms of commendation of dorian gray is sufficient to prove how free from offence the story really is in the original version of the story one passage struck pater as being indefinite and likely to suggest evil to evil minds this paragraph wilde elaborated but he refused to suppress a single sentence of what he had written no artist is consciously wrong he declared a similar incident is recorded as early as eighteen seventy eight Sharp, the professor of poetry at Oxford, suggested some improvements in Wilde's Newdigate Prize poem, Ravenna. Wilde listened to all the suggestions with courtesy, and even took notes of them, but he went away and had the poem printed without making a single alteration in it. The picture of Dorian Gray first appeared on June the 20th, 1890, in Lippincott's monthly magazine for July. It was published in America by the J. B. Lippincott Company of Philadelphia, simultaneously with the English edition of the magazine, issued by Messrs. Ward, Locke and Company. A few weeks before the publication of his romance, Wilde wrote a letter to a publisher stating that his story would appear in Lippincott's on the following 20th of June, and that after three months the copyright reverted to him. The publication of Dorian Gray would create a sensation, he wrote. He was going to add two additional chapters, and would the publishing house with whom he was corresponding care to consider it? Unfortunately, the letter bears no indication of the house to which it was sent. However, on the 1st of July in the following year, the picture of Dorian Gray was published in book form by Messrs. Ward, Locke and Company. In this form it contained seven new chapters. The binding was of a rough grey paper, the colour of cigarette ash, with back of parchment vellum. The gilt lettering and design was by Charles Ricketts. A sumptuous édition de luxe, limited to 250 copies, signed by the author, was also issued, the covers being similar to the ordinary edition, but the gilt tooling more elaborate. In March 1891, Wilde had written a preface to Dorian Gray in the Fortnightly Review, in which he enunciated his creed as an artist. This preface is included in all impressions of Dorian Gray, which contain twenty chapters. Wilde was indeed a true prophet when he foretold that his story would create a sensation though it occupied but a hundred pages in a monthly periodical it was reviewed as fully as any chef d'oeuvre of a leading novelist in one of his letters wilde says that out of over two hundred press cuttings which he received in reference to dorian gray he took public notice of only three but it is impossible to doubt but that he was thinking of his critics when he gave vent to his views on journalists and the attitude of the british public towards art in his essay on the soul of man a few months later a work of art is the unique result of a unique temperament he writes its beauty comes from the fact that the author is what he is the moment that an artist takes notice of what other people want and tries to supply the demand he ceases to be an artist he considers it to be an impertinence for the public represented by the journalist who knows nothing about art to criticise the artist and his work. 
in this country he declares that the arts that have escaped best from the aggressive offensive and brutalizing attempts on the part of the public to interfere with the individual as an artist are the arts in which the public takes no interest he gives poetry as an instance and declares that we have been able to have fine poetry because the public does not read it and consequently does not influence it but in the case of the novel and the drama arts in which the public does take an interest the result of the exercise of popular authority has been absolutely ridiculous no country produces such badly written fiction such tedious common work in the novel form it must necessarily be so the popular standard is of such a character that no artist can get to it it is at once too easy and too difficult to be a popular novelist it is too easy because the requirements of the public as far as plot style psychology treatment of life and the treatment of literature are concerned are within the reach of the very meanest capacity and the most uncultivated mind it is too difficult because to meet such requirements the artist would have to do violence to his temperament would have to write not for the artistic joy of writing but for the amusement of half-educated people and so would have to suppress his individualism forget his culture annihilate his style and surrender everything that is valuable in him the one thing that the public dislikes is novelty any attempt to extend the subject matter of art is extremely distasteful to the public and yet the vitality and progress of art depend in a large measure on the continual extension of subject matter the public dislikes novelty because it is afraid of it a fresh mode of beauty is absolutely distasteful to the public and whenever it appears it gets so angry and bewildered that it always uses two stupid expressions one is that the work of art is grossly unintelligible the other that the work of art is grossly immoral when the public says a work of art is grossly unintelligible it means that the artist has said a beautiful thing that is new when the public describes a work as grossly immoral it means that the artist has said or made a beautiful thing that is true the former expression has reference to style the latter to subject matter but it probably uses the words very vaguely as an ordinary mob will use ready-made paving stones there is not a single real poet or prose writer of this the nineteenth century on whom the british public has not solemnly conferred diplomas of immorality of course the public is very reckless in the use of the word an artist is of course not disturbed by it the true artist is a man who believes absolutely in himself because he is absolutely himself but i can fancy that if an artist produced a work of art in england that immediately on its appearance was recognized by the public through its medium which is the public press as a work that was quite intelligible and highly moral he would begin seriously to question whether in its creation he had really been himself at all and consequently whether the work was not quite unworthy of him 
and either of a thoroughly second-rate order or of no artistic value whatsoever wilde then goes on to discuss the use of other words by journalists seeking to describe the work of an artist these are the words exotic unhealthy and morbid footnote the times february the twenty third eighteen ninety three in reviewing salome said it is an arrangement in blood and ferocity morbid bizarre repulsive and very offensive wilde replied times march the second the opinions of english critics on a french work of mine have of course little if any interest for me in the soul of man he wrote to call an artist morbid because he deals with morbidity as his subject matter is as silly as if one called shakespeare mad because he wrote king lear he disposes of each in turn briefly he says that the public is morbid the artist is never morbid the word exotic merely expresses the rage of the momentary mushroom against the immortal entrancing and exquisitely lovely orchid and he concludes what the public calls an unhealthy novel is always a beautiful and healthy work of art end of section one